So the Buddha says that if one does not perform these acts of bodily renunciation, one will still in the future have to repay the debts one has incurred in past lives, just as he did. Sutra. When you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi, they must also cease stealing. This is the third clear and unanswerable instruction on purity given by the first command of the Buddhas of the past world honored ones. Commentary When you teach people in the world to cultivate samadhi, they must also cease stealing. Since they want to cultivate, they must get rid of their thoughts of stealing. This is a third clear and unanswerable instruction on purity given by the first Kamwan and the Buddhas of the past world honored ones. This is an unchanging instruction given by Shakyamuni Buddha and by all Buddhas of the past. Sutra, therefore, Ananda, if cultivators of Transamadhi do not cease stealing, they are like someone who pours water into a leaking cup and hopes to fill it. He may continue for as many ends as they are find most of dust, but it still will not be full in the end. Commentary Therefore, Ananda, if cultivators of Transamadhi do not cease stealing, they are like someone who pours water into a leaking cup and hopes to fill it. If you are trying to fill a cup with a hole in it, you may continue for as many ends as there are fine most of dust, but it still will not be full in the end. Sutra If fishers do not store away anything but their ropes and bows, if they give what is left over from their food offerings to hungry living beings, if they put their palms together and make obeisance to the entire great assembly, if when people scold them, they can treat it as praise, if they can sacrifice their very bodies and minds, giving their flesh, bones, and blood to living creatures, and if they do not repeat the non ultimate teachings of the first come one, as though they, they were their own explanations, miss representing them to those who have just begun to study. Then the Buddha gives them his seal as having attained true samadhi. Commentary If wishes do not store away anything but their ropes and bows, wishes should have three ropes, a bow and sitting cloth. They don't need anything else. They do not accumulate possessions. If they give what is left over from their food offerings to hungry living beings, they give alms that they cannot eat to living beings who have nothing to eat. If they put their palms together and make obeisance to the entire great assembly, they place their palms together and are respectful to any gathering of people. If when people scope them, they can treat it as praise, Regard scolding as being the same as praise, they do not react to the scolding. If they can sacrifice their very bodies and minds, giving their flesh, bones, and blood to living creatures, their minds harbor no arrogant thoughts, their bodies do not act in ways that display pride and self-satisfaction. When someone scolds you, you should act as if he is singing a song for you. If you yourself do not scold people and yet someone scolds you, you shouldn't even understand what he is saying. It shouldn't even make sense to you. It should be as if he is speaking some language you don't understand, such as Japanese, English, or Chinese, depending on which one you don't know. When someone is clearly scolding you, you just think, Oh, he is saying such nice things about me. Look at it in the reverse. If someone hits you, just pretend you bumped into a wall. Suppose you were careless and ran smack into a wall and were left with a big lump on your head. If you then turned around and sucked the wall with your fist, saying, Why did bump into me? You'd only end up with a hurt hand to boot. 
when someone tries you, if you view it as if you bumped into a wall, the whole affair will end right there. True bishops who have brought forth the result for Buddhists should even give up their flesh and blood to other beings if there are some who want to partake of it. Once, when Shakyamuni Buddha was on the coast ground, he saw a starving tiger and he gave up his body to the tiger to eat. The tiger is one of the world's most ferocious beasts, and yet the Buddha on the coast ground could give up his own body to the tiger. If they do not repeat the non-ultimate teachings of the first come one as though they were their own explanations, misrepresenting them to those who have just begun to study. They will not discuss the teachings of the small vehicle in such a way that they appear to their own explanations. In other words, they won't plagiarize the Buddha, thereby misrepresenting themselves and confuse people who have first begun to study. If they do not do any of these things, then the Buddha gives them his seal as having attained true samadhi. The Buddha will give the seal of certification to people like this. They have genuine samadhi power. Sutra, what I have had said, have said here is the Buddha's teaching. Any explanation counter to it is the teaching of Babiyan. Commentary. This explanation is the way the Buddha speak Dharma. Any other explanation is the Dharma spoken by the kings of demons. Unanswerable instruction on purity. One must cut off false speech. Sutra. Ananda, though living beings in the six paths of any mundane world, cannot kill, steal, or lust, either physically or mentally. These three aspects of their conduct thus being perfect. Yet if they tell lies, the samadhi they attain will not be pure. They will become demons of love and fears and will lose the seed of the first come one. Commentary Ananda, so living beings in the six paths of any mundane world may not kill, steal, or lust either physically or mentally. With their bodies, they do not commit acts of killing, stealing, or lust. In their minds, there are no thoughts of killing, stealing, or lust. These are three aspects of their conduct, thus being perfect. Yet, if they tell lies, the samadhi they attain will not be pure. This means it is a habit with them. They are always telling big lies. Since they are not pure, they will become demons of love and views and will lose the seed of the first common. They will become demons of love or demon of views. Why do they lose the seed of the Tathagata? It is because they lie excessively. Sutra. They say that they have attained what they have not attained and that they have been certified when they have not been certified. Perhaps they seek to be foremost in the world, the most venerated and superior person. So their audiences, they say that they have attained the fruition of a Shrotapana, the fruition of a Sakri Dagamin, the fruition of an Anagamin, the fruition of a Hatrip, the Pratika Buddha Vihaiko, or the various levels of Bodhisattvahood up to and including the Ten Grounds, in order to be revered, revered by others and because they are greedy for offerings. Commentary What kind of lies do they tell? Ordinary lies aside, they say that they have attained what they have not attained. They have not attained the way. Basically, they don't understand the least thing about cultivating. They don't know how to recite the Buddha's name. They don't know how to hold precepts. They don't know how to sit in churn. They act like they know, but they don't. They hear someone explain some principle and they interrupt with, I understand that. I already knew that a long time ago. Or they said, or they say, hey, I've already got the way. I'm enlightened. I'm a Buddha. They say that they have been certified when they have not been certified. 
They have not reached the first stage of a hardship, much less do they have an understanding of the levels above that. But they say, Do you know what I am? I'm an Ahat, or I'm a Buddha, or I'm a Bodhisattva. Why do they say these things? Perhaps they seek to form to be foremost in the world, the most venerated and superior person. He says, someone said recently to one of my disciples, what sect are you? We are in this together. We should join ranks and I'll be the leader. I'm the founder of American Buddhism. I'm the first patriarch of American Buddhism. That's seeking to be number one. So their audiences, they say that they have attained the fruition of an Shrotapanna, the fruition of a Sakridagamin, the fruition of an Anagamin, the fruition of a Hatship. They start out telling those around them that they are first stage Ahas, but soon that their voice not lofty enough, so they say, Oh, I just certified to the second fruition of a hardship. And then a second later, they claim fruition to the fourth level. Still, fourth fruition uh, is just a hardship and not the highest position, so they are not satisfied. They claim to have the Pratika Buddha Vihaiku of the various levels of Bodhisattvahood up to and including the ten grounds. They start telling people they are Pratika Buddhas or they claim to be at any one of the stages of Bodhisattva practice, even the ten grounds. Why do such people claim to be Ahats, Pratika Buddhas and Bodhisattvas? What it amounts to is that they are cheating people and telling big lies in order to get people to believe in them. If no one believes in them, they don't have an income. As soon as people believe, then the offerings start to pour in. And so intent are they to be revered, revered by others. So greedy are they for their offerings, and they do not fear, falling into the hell of pulling out tongues. If one is a liar, after one's death, one goes into this hell where an iron hook sinks into one's tongue, pulls it out, and a sword chops it off. That's the retribution for lying. And yet, there are still people who dare to do it. We don't even have to look beyond this world. Just take me mutes, for instance. Why are they mute? They are undergoing a retribution for excessive lying. They get to be people, but they can't talk. See how much lying you can do now, is the message. Why can't they talk? They have had their tongues cut out. Although they have tongues, their sense in them is gone. Their tongues have no nature. Why are some people blind? It is because they look down on other people. They always consider themselves to be better than anyone else. They were smarter and more talented in every way. And so in this life, they can't see people. Now they must ask themselves whether they are really better than everyone else. The deaf also are undergoing a retribution for having eavesdropped on conversations. They used to pull their ears through numerous keyholes to find out what was being said. Present-day spies with their married ways of overhearing, overhearing people of stealing private conversations may well have to bear the same retribution and be deaf at some future point in time. However, if once you understand the principle, you then refrain from lying. You can avoid being mute. If you no longer look down on people, you won't have to be blind. If you don't steal others' conversations, you won't have to be deaf. Being mute, hunchback, and blind are all retributions for having slandered the triple jewel. Sutra these Ichantikas destroy the seeds of Buddhahood just as surely as a Dala tree is destroyed if it is chopped down. The Buddha predicts that such people sever the good rules forever and lose their knowledge and vision. 
immersed in the sea of the three sufferings they cannot attain samadhi. Commentary This enchantikas destroy the seeds of Buddhahood. People who tell big lies, who say they have attained what they in fact have not attained, who say they have been certified to what they have not been certified to, and who say they understand things they do not understand. Such people are enchantikas, which means those who have cut off their good rules. If you cut off your good rules, then of course your bad rules will multiply. People who tell big lies and trick people in the world ruin their own Buddha seed, just as surely as a Tala tree is destroyed if it is chopped down. The Tala tree found in India grows, in, grows to great heights, but if it is chopped down, it will not grow again. These people sever the Buddha seed in the same way. One might cut down a Tala tree, neither will grow again. The Buddha predicts that such people sever their good rules forever and lose their knowledge and vision. The Buddha's prediction for such people is that they ruin their own good rules and become bereft of any sense or insight. Immersed in the sea of the three sufferings, they cannot attain samadhi. The three sufferings referred to here are the suffering of knives, which refers to the hell of the mountain of blind knives. The suffering of blood, which refers to the hell of bleeding, where one's entire body keeps bleeding and bleeding. The suffering of fire, which refers to the hell of burning by fire. These people fall into these three terrible hells. Sutra, I command the Bodhisattvas and Ahas to appear after my extinction in response bodies in the Dharma ending age and to take various forms in order to rescue those in the cycle of rebirth. Commentary, I command the Bodhisattvas and Ahas to appear after my extinction in response bodies in the Dharma ending age. They should use response bodies and transformation bodies to be born in this world where there is so much suffering and distress. During the Dharma ending age, they will take various forms, they will appear in various ways, perhaps as human beings, perhaps as animals, or in any one of a manner of forms. They will constantly accord with living beings in order to rescue those in the cycle of rebirth. They will universally save living beings. Bodhisattvas come back as animals as well. You shouldn't think that it is disrespectful to say so, because they really do. In their practice of the Bodhisattva way, they will go and teach animals as when Shakyamuni Buddha in a past life was a deer king and rescued the deer. Sutra they should either become shramanas, white-robed lay people, kings, ministers, or officials, virgin youths or maidens, and so forth, even prostitutes, widows, roughly gates, thieves, butchers, or dealers in contraband, doing the same things as these kinds of people while they praise the Buddha Vihago and cause them to enter samadhi in body and mind. Commentary. These bodhisattvas and ahas make transformation bodies and become shramanas, people who have, who have left the home life, either fully ordained or novices, or they become white-robed lay people. Lay people do not leave the home life, and they were referred to as the white-robed in India. They protect and uphold the triple jewel. This is because left-home people do not blow but must eat, do not sue but must wear clothes. So it is necessary for lay people to make offerings to them. All the bodhisattvas become kings in the human realm, or ministers or officials. All they become virgin youths, or maidens, and so forth, even prostitutes, widows, or they become profligates, thieves, butchers, or dealers in contraband. They even become people who force themselves on women 
or who steal things or kill animals or doing things like opium. The Bodhisattvas and Nahas do the same things as these kinds of people. Why do they turn into people like those? It is because they want to convert those kinds of people. In order to do this, they must use the four dharmas of attraction. Giving kind words beneficial practice and similar work. First, they attract them by giving. There are three kinds of giving. The giving of wealth, the giving of dharma, and the giving of fearlessness. If one has money, one gives it. If one knows the dharma, one speaks it for others, thereby giving. If someone is frightened or upset, one can protect them and comfort them, thereby dispelling their fears. That is the giving of fearlessness. But in giving in these various ways, one should not be greedy and expect repayment of some kind. You should not think, ah, now I am giving in this way and in the future I will gain various advantages. Do it and forget it. Let it go. Then the substance of the three aspects is empty. The three aspects, uh, the three aspects are the giver, the gift, and the receiver. You should practice giving with the attitude that it is something you should do rather than that You are amassing all kinds of merit and virtue. The giving of karma is the same way. When you speak dharma for others, you should not be thinking, my merit and virtue from speaking the dharma is no doubt tremendous. You should all make offerings to me. The same is true of giving of fearlessness. In general, when you give, you should not be reflecting upon how much benefit there is in it for you, nor should you only be willing to give when you think it will be advantageous for you, while refusing to give when it won't. Second, they attract them with kind words. For instance, the Buddha says to Ananda, Good indeed, good indeed. And in the same way, the Bodhisattvas praise beings saying, you are really a good boy, you are so intelligent, you really have good rules. Third, they attract them with beneficial practices. This means doing things to help others, not to help yourself. Fourth, they attract them through similar work. That is, whatever beings do, they do. Perhaps a Bodhisattva wants to save a prostitute who has good rules that have come to maturity. Mantanji's daughter, mentioned in this sutra, is an example. Mantanji's daughter was a prostitute, but her time was right, and so when Ananda returned to the Jetta Grove, she followed along. As soon as the Buddha spoke Dharma for her, she was certified as having attained the third fruition of a hardship. Eventually, she attained the fourth fruition, and she was a prostitute to start with. So, in order to save prostitutes, bodhisattvas may transform into prostitutes themselves because if they are engaged in the same profession and are friends, what they say will be trusted by those they wish to save. For instance, a university student may say, I believe in the Buddha Dharma. It's wonderful. I'm going to investigate such and such a sutra right now. The students that he is talking to say, I'd like to go too. We'd also like to look into that sutra. So everyone comes to investigate the Suragama Sutra. It's the same principle. Therefore, you never know who might be a Bodhisattva or a Nahat. But if you are one, don't tell anyone. You don't want to go around saying, I'm a Bodhisattva. You should listen to what I have to say. Why can't you do that? Because the Buddha forbid it. So the Bodhisattvas and Nahas do the same things as these kinds of people, but while doing it, they praise the Buddha vehicle and cause them to enter samadhi in body and mind. They may indulge in the same activities, but they speak the Buddha Dharma at every chance they get. The Buddha Dharma is so fine, it's beyond compare. And in this way, they cause those who listen to be enticed, just as if they were eating candy. 
That reminds me of an historical record. In the past, in China, there lived a monk named Du Sun. He would sometimes lecture sutras and speak Dharma. He also taught people how to sit and investigate Chen. Sometimes he taught people to be mindful of the Buddha. He used all kinds of methods to teach and transform living beings. He had a disciple who left the home life under him and followed him for more than 10 years. Every day, the disciple was very attentive to the teacher's conduct and activities. He kept trying to figure out what his teacher was, that is, he was a bodhisattva or an arhat or perhaps a Buddha. Finally, after 10 years, he came to the conclusion that his teacher, Dharma Master Tu Sun, was absolutely ordinary, that there was nothing unusual about him. The teacher ate, as did other people. The teacher wore clothes, as did, as did other people. The teacher slept, as did other people. He wasn't any different from anyone else. So the disciples decided he probably wasn't a Buddha or a Bodhisattva or an Ahad. With that, he went to his teacher to bow out. He decided to leave. What were his plans? He was going to Wutai Mountain to bow to Manjushri Bodhisattva. He intended to seek wisdom from Manjushri Bodhisattva with the hope of becoming enlightened. Teacher, he said, I've studied here for more than 10 years and I don't feel I've learned anything. I don't understand anything and I'm really stupid. So I've decided to go about to Manjushri Bodhisattva in the hope that I can realize some wisdom. Fine, said his teacher. You want to go climb that mountain, so be it. Be on your way, but I have two letters I'd like you to take along for me and deliver on your way. One letter was for old mother pig. The other letter was for Madame Green. When the disciple reached the address that was written on Madame Green's letter, she turned out to be a prostitute. The disciple was getting suspicious. Uh, suspicious. Was my teacher doing writing letters to a prostitute? He wondered. Is she his lover? And he's having me be the go-between. But he delivered the letter saying, My teacher, Tu Xuan, sent you a letter. Madame Green took the letter, read it, sat down and said, Good, he's leaving. I'm leaving too. Then she died on the spot. She entered Nirvana. The disciple found the whole event quite strange. So And so he took the letter and read it. Then he found out that Madame Green was really quenching Bodhisattva for the letter said, Kuan Yin, I finished my business here and I'm going. You should come with me. The disciple sighed with regret. If I had known that was Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, I would have knelt before her. And until she'd entered Nirvana, I would have never gotten up. So I could have sought for wisdom and enlightenment. That would have been great. But now I've missed the opportunity. That's just exactly what's meant by the saying. Face to face with her, one fails to recognize Quan Xin. He took up the other letter and headed for old Mother Pig's place. But when he got to the address, no one had heard of her. As he was passing a pig's tea, an old soul spoke to him. Why are you looking for old Mother Pig? The disciple was astonished and wondered what kind of freak he'd encountered. Impulsively, he replied, My teacher told me to deliver a letter to old mother pig. Oh, said the soul. Well, I'm old mother pig. You can give me the letter. The soul took the letter and looked at it, so it was hard to know whether she could understand what he said. Nonetheless, when she finished looking at it, she sat down and said, Oh, his business is finished. I'll go back too. And she died. When the disciple looked at the letter, it showed the old pig was a transformation body of Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. Is it really possible that Universal Worthy was that pig? He wondered, still blocked with doubts. 
and he didn't have any idea what business it was that his teacher had finished. He went on to Wutai Mountain and there he saw a very old monk who asked him, What are you doing here? I came to bow to the greatly wise Manjushri Bodhisattva and to seek for wisdom and enlightenment. Ah, oh, you, said the old monk. You've come to bow to Manjushri Bodhisattva, but bowing to your own teacher is 10,000 times better. Why? asked the disciple. Your teacher, the venerable Tutsun, is Amitabha Buddha appearing in the world again. He's come to roam and play in the human realm to teach and transform living beings. You've been his disciple for more than 10 years. How come you've never figured that out? Oh, my teacher is Amitabha Buddha, said the disciple. He doesn't look like him. And when he looked again, the old monk was gone. Then you saw a note there which said, Manjushri Bodhisattva instructs you to immediately return to your teacher to Swan, who is Amitabha Buddha. Finally, the disciple believed it. He had met Manjushri Bodhisattva in the flesh and been told to go back to his own teacher. So he rushed back only to find that the monk Tu Swan had entered the stillness days before. Once again, he'd missed his chance. He'd been the disciple of Amitabha Buddha for a decade and never realized it. He renounced that was at hand to seek what was afar, only to find that he should return to his own teacher. Now, who was there left to see?